Women of Reddit, what is your nice girl's finish last story? I had spent a year building up the confidence of my ex-boyfriend who was extremely insecure, consistently reinforcing him that he is attractive, smart, worthy of any women's time, you know, stuff a girlfriend should do for their partners. He left me for the girl he thought he never had a chance with because in his words, you made me feel like I could do anything I want, I did not realize that involved doing other girls too. I was voted into president of student council in my college. I worked with younger girls who just wanted the title on their resumes and perks. I kept strict with them that the students money should be for prizes and or some parties for the students, not expensive trips and rewards for council members. Tuition is expensive enough we should give back as much of that as possible to the students experience. Well after almost an entire year of fighting with these selfish people. They thought I was being unfair to them voted me off with a week of my term left, so they could go on one last student paid trip while charging the students for the last activities they put on. It was crushing and really put bigger politics into perspective for me. First grade, I will never forget, our teacher, who up until this point I viewed as a champion of goodness and justice, had to leave the room and told us to sit silently Indian style. Yes I'm that old, in front of her chair to wait for her return. I was the only one who did it the entire time she was gone. Meanwhile, about 8 little butthole boys ran around screeching like hooligans until someone shouted teachers coming and those misbehaving brats lined up in front of me like little angels right before she entered the room. They all got lollipops for being in the front row. I had left some space because I had remembered how teacher had always laughingly said, leave a little room for my feet everyone else, myself included got punished. My face burned with rage and I cried but I did not tattle because I knew teacher didn't like tattletales. The injustice burns me to this day, and that was the day I learned life isn't fair. I was 6. Comma my face burned with rage and I cried but I did not tattle because I knew teacher didn't like tattletales. You're making me burn with fury. That's just crazy. Go get yourself a lollipop tomorrow. P. Made a certifiable best friend my sophomore year at college. We were both studying in Ohio, but originally from Indiana. So we carpooled to visit home. We became inseparable and I bent over backwards to help her with any little thing. She was even the one to let me know that we would be applying to transfer to her school back in our home state, where her boyfriend attended. I wasn't thrilled with paying super high out of state tuition, so I agreed. Flash forward a year, we're settled at our new college and she's cheating on her boyfriend hooray. I convince her to break it off with him. I was still good friends with the guy, and trying to hook up with his musician neighbor. So one weekend while attending one of his house parties, he pulls me away to bemoan his breakup and go on and on about how they'll get back together, they're destined for each other etc. I felt bad for the guy, not only because he was a super nice dude, but also because his ex GF, my BFF, had her new boyfriend in her dorm room and were going to town. I cracked, I grabbed him by the shoulders, told him don't you ever tell, my BFF, this, but you need to move on, she has. She's happy and you deserve to be happy. Just let it go. Next morning, my best friend has sent me Facebook messages galore calling me a traitor. Awful person. ETC. So yeah. I lost my best friend at the time because I told her ex BF to move on. In hindsight, she was a pretty awful friend. TL. DR. Told my best friend's ex BF to move on. Best friend called me a traitor. I dated someone through the end of high school and most of college. We started out completely in love and constantly together, and then drifted into. Well, let's just say I thought we were always in love, but looking back, it's clear we weren't exactly on the same page. This guy graduated from college a year before me, and invited me to his graduation. I hauled butt for nearly two hours on the subway to the other end of New York City. Didn't know where his family was sitting and all his friends were in the ceremony, so I sat alone for the whole, boring thing. Afterwards we met up and said hi to his parents, who then went home. I was in college in another city, so I was looking forward to spending some one on one time with my boyfriend who I didn't get to see that often. We went over to his dorm, where he informed me that he still had to move all his stuff out. Where were all his friends? Nowhere to be seen. Strong guy neighbors? Nada. Family? Gone? Obviously. 
So who was going to help him schlep all those heavy boxes down to his car? Why, his sweet, loving girlfriend, of course. I don't remember how long it took, but I was glad when we were finally done, because it meant I was finally going to enjoy some romantic time with my guy, right? Haha, ha. no, silly rabbit. No sooner did we finish shoving the last box of crap into his car than he said, Well, thanks for your help. I'm going to go hang out with my friends now. Um, I thought we would be spending some time together. Just the two of us I spent most of the year 200 miles away. Dumbass. Uh, yeah, no. I want to go see my friends. The ones he has been hanging out with like every single day. But you can come too. I guess, if you want to. I declined. And went home. The penny finally dropped. As they say, I finally understood what he felt for me, which was nothing. Then I spent the next several months solidly kicking myself for being that dumb. I can't say my love life has been perfect since then, but at least I know I will never allow someone to take me for granted that way ever again. My good friend had horrible breast cancer. During her recovery her good friend who was a nurse hung out with and helped with her recovery. It turns out the good friend was having an affair with her husband. I hope your friend is doing okay, this one hit me hard. Had a close male friend who had a rough breakup with his gf who cheated on him multiple times. We had always been attracted to each other but timing had never been right. After a while he asked me out, and I told him it might not be a good idea, as he seemed to still be affected by his ex. He waited a few more months and asked again, claiming he was over her. It was one of the best relationships I've ever had. We truly loved and cared for each other and had so much fun together for over a year. We discussed moving in together and our respective families were quite happy for us. Then his ex moved back to town. Even though she was living with her new so, she decided she wanted her ex, my partner, back. And apparently he wanted her back, too. I discovered him cheating, which broke my heart. He claimed he didn't know what to do because he loved us both but ultimately chose to be with her. Now they are married but unhappy, as she got pregnant by another guy just months after their wedding. The whole situation makes me sad still. I can't even feel the slightest bit of schadenfreude. He sounds like a real dummy. You avoided a life of being with a dummy. I had been telling my best friend for months about the huge crush I had on a guy in one of my classes. One day I asked if she would be there when we first hung out so I would be a little more comfortable. She had a class with him too, but neither of us talked to him much. She brought up the topic of sex and was telling him how she'd slept with 5, 1 stroke 2 guys and was asking him about his experience. I admitted I'd never kissed anyone. After, he asked if she wanted to go to the soccer game with him while I had to go home. Within the week they were fricking and she paraded him around me. I went out to a club with the guy I was dating and my friends, who he didn't really know. When it was time to leave we all walked home together. I was staying over at the guy's house that night. I was pretty drunk and not feeling great so I decided to go rehydrate and go to bed. I was worried about leaving my friend so I asked the guy I was seeing if he could make sure she got home okay as it was late. She only lived 5 minutes up the road, I waited in his bed for over an hour for him to come back. When he eventually did. He went straight to sleep. I found out a week later that he slept with her whilst I was waiting. This isn't so much about you being nice, as much as he is a piece of crap. I used to, and still occasionally do, bartend at a dive bar of ill repute. The other bartenders treat the bar like their own personal cooler, take advantage of the drugs being tossed their way by customers, frequently get too wasted to effectively work disappear into the stock room to frick customers while the bar is still open and of course overcharge customers to pocket the extra cash. I don't do any of these things. Don't do any of the drugs offered to me. For the most part, stay sober so as to be able to count money and always let s faced customers know when they've accidentally given me a $10 bill as a tip when I'm sure they meant to hand me a $1. I have a boyfriend and let the more amorous customers know that I'm faithful and there's no chance. I try to be a good employee. I still get regularly blamed for stealing or drinking the liquor I guess because everyone else always does and the owners are paranoid. That crap pisses me off. It's not like there's a way to save face without throwing your other employees under the bus either. When on a date with a guy I met through my friends, they're married. It went great. 
texting every day, etc. A couple of weeks later, our friends invited us to hang out. After a few drinks, we started playing Never Have I Ever. It ended up coming out during the game that I've never had sex. Long story. He stopped talking texting me after that. I found out a few weeks later that he started sleeping with one of our friends that was over that night. They started dating soon after that, and coming over to hang out. Then my friends mentioned all of us going bar hopping. It sounded fun, and I was game. Then they said actually, would you mind babysitting the kids? You're responsible and we trust you. Besides, it's gonna be couples going anyways. I learned that day that responsible fun. At least I have a great job and a motorcycle. I've had friends try that with me. Oh, you should babysit for so and so, so they can come to the parties we throw. You're responsible. I declined. I work just as much as everyone else. I want to have fun on the weekend, not work more by default so everyone else can have a great time. I had been dating a guy for roughly a month after being friends for a year or so. One day he told me that he wanted to break up because he had realized he was in love with his old friends with benefits, and that I want her to make me happy the way you make me happy colon. Bro, that's the most heartbreaking thing I've heard in a while. Hope everything's better now. 12 year old me was a chubby, socially awkward dork, with braces and awful frizzy hair. The whole 9 yards of awkward puberty. I didn't have many friends because I had awful social skills. And most of the friends I had were boys because I didn't know how to interact with other girls very well. I would always try to be there for my guy friends. Always be there when they wanted to hang out or have someone to talk to. Obviously I was crushing on all of my friends. Everyone else was getting boyfriends why couldn't I have one? Because I was an awkward dorky kid with zero confidence and nothing to offer. That's why. Took me a couple of years to figure out that just being nice wasn't going to get me noticed as a romantic partner. I needed to develop my own personality and grow into a real person with a life. I'm happy I don't just feel like a nice girl anymore. I was infatuated with this guy in my first year of college. We hung out. He lived on my floor. And I really wanted to go out with him. But I was too nervous. So one day, I bake a tray of brownies. I make them from scratch. Spending hours to impress him with my man catching baking skills. I bring the brownies to his room. Wearing what amounted to a homemaker dress. And knock on the door. Just a minute. He shouts. There's some clambering and rustling. But I make nothing of it. Thinking he must be playing video games in his underwear or something. Turns out. He was rushing to put clothes on because he had a sex worker in his room, and he thought I was an ra coming to investigate the 30 something year old woman he had brought into our dorm. Long story short, I ate the brownies by myself that night and he never spoke to me again, perhaps out of embarrassment at being caught paying for sex. I got diagnosed with juvenile arthritis senior year of high school. I decided to go off 180 miles away from home for college instead of going to the school I hated that was 30 minutes away. My first semester went great. I had fun, made friends, and got all A's. My second semester started, and the first day of classes I came down with strep throat. It triggered a huge flare of my arthritis. I could barely move. I asked my parents to let me drop my classes and come home, but they said no. They told me to stick it out and finish my classes and then recover over the summer. I stopped going to class because walking hurt too bad. I stopped eating because the cafeteria was too far away. Failed all my classes. Lost 30 pounds. But I stayed at school because that was what my parents wanted. And I didn't want to disappoint them. I ended up in the hospital. I dropped out of school completely and I'm still trying to get back. Now to the school near home. I have several destroyed joints from the flare. Some that need replacement. I'm 19. I'm so mad at your parents right now. I'll keep this story in mind. I'm a father and I hope I won't be like your parents. I'm sorry for you. I hope you and your parents learned from this. This is probably going to be buried and is a completely self-indulgent sob story, but we. In high school I had a massive crush on a guy, and everyone except him knew it. We finally ended up in the same class one year and, to my surprise, he seemed really interested in becoming friends with me. So we became really good friends. We would hang out after school all the time, stay up all night texting. I'd go over to his house on weekends, 
crap like that. Then he messaged me one day saying how in love he was with my best friend, and asked me if I could help him get her. So I did. I figured he was never going to like me the way I liked him, and I had no right to hinder any relationship he wanted with other people. So I told her he liked her. She didn't resist as much as I'd hoped she would, and they got together. They dated on and off for the rest of high school, and he and I remained really good friends. I pretty much became his relationship confidant. I would be woken up at 3am because they had a fight. I had to listen to him practice guitar songs he wanted to play for her. I had to listen to him stress about having sex with her for the first time. He even cried in front of me a few times over her. And, yeah, it hurt a lot and I was heartbroken for years. But he was my friend. And I didn't want to let unrequited feelings turn me into a bad person. It wasn't his fault he didn't love me. Then they broke up for good. And after a bit he moved on to a new girlfriend and completely cut contact with me. I was a really supportive girlfriend for 3 years who was happy to hang out just once a week. Around his busy schedule of hanging out with his friends and playing Xbox. I drove everywhere because he couldn't be bothered to learn to drive even though his parents bought him a car. I was enthusiastic and gave about 400% more oral than he ever reciprocated and that was the limit of it because of some dead bedroom issue he was struggling with. In return, he never hung out with my friends or did any normal couple stuff like road trips or weekend trips away. I was in a car crash and he didn't bother to come over and see if I was okay, because he was busy hanging out with his best friend he hadn't seen since the day before. I was devastated when we called it quits because I genuinely loved him with my everything and put all of myself into the relationship and he wasn't a bit bothered. I'm so glad I got out though because I have an amazing boyfriend now who loves me and spending time with me. I can't believe I put up with that crap for so long. My ex actually is a nice person and we're on friendly terms. I just hope he grows up and becomes less selfish. Out of the office I have a good one. I was one of the few females in my major, computer science, and university. I had a handful of guy friends and we all got along great. One day, we're all working on assignments together and this one guy is having trouble understanding something. I realize I had solved this problem, so I roll over to see how I can help. I type in some code from memory and try to get it to compile, but it won't work. I'm looking and I'm looking, and I just can't figure it out for a few minutes. Then I realize it's just a little syntax error, which is basically just a typo in the code. I wrote else, instead of else if. Any other dev will vouch for me when I say little errors like this happen to everyone, and sometimes they take longer than you'd like to admit to figure out. Plus this was first year, gimme a break a, eh? anyway. So I fix the error and the code works as expected. But what does this guy do? He doesn't thank me for my help. Oh no. He signals all of our other guy's friends to come over and see how stupid I was for making a silly little syntax error. He was laughing as he was saying it and everything. I told him off pretty good and he shut up, but I'm still pee to this day. I think he really couldn't stand that the girl was the one that figured it out, so he had to tear me down instead of thanking me. Same guy called off our friendship because I chose to date another guy in our friend group instead of him. I was devastated at the time, but in retrospect it was for the best. I repeatedly lose guys to my best friend. Sometimes I realize that they're not nice guys but sometimes it's guys that I really like who end up treating her really well while she treats them terribly. She's very rude to all her boyfriends and starts every relationship off telling them I'm gonna dump you in 3 months when I get bored with you. A lot of them think she's joking and then 3 months in, there she is dumping them. I can't tell if she's doing it on purpose or not because I never tell her I like the guys so I don't know if she's picking up the vibe that I like them or it's completely coincidental. I've told her before that she does this and it's almost like she doesn't care. She just tells me act more outgoing and interesting when we meet the guys and they won't go for her. The worst part is a lot of the guys admit to me later that she's a B to them. They regret going out with her or that they should have went for me when they had a chance. One painful dude in particular told me I wasn't physically his type but she was and that's why he went for her. I know little about your life but this best friend doesn't sound like a friend at all. Unless you count her unintentionally showing you these guys are jerk offs. I got a B in my freshman year wood shop because I wouldn't cut in line to use the machines. I also wouldn't protest when anyone else cut in front of me. As a result several of my projects were literally the last ones turned in. 
Nice means spineless, right? Not cutting in line equals nice. Letting other people cut in front equals spineless. This may not be the kind of loser in love story OP might be looking for, but definitely a case of me being way too nice and bad things, almost, happening because of it. When I was in my teens, I liked riding my bike around the river belt in my hometown, small city, 50,000 people. I did this most weekends, weather permitting, and I usually did it pleasantly alone. One day, I was doing my thing and this middle aged guy bikes up next to me and invites me to race him. I didn't want to I was having some quality alone time, after all, but I agreed, because it was the nice thing to do and, like so many others, I was raised to believe that I should make people feel comfortable and happy. So I raced him and he started taking the race beyond where I usually go, to a secluded area. I started feeling worse about this, but was young and didn't understand yet that I can say no whenever I want. We're in the secluded area and the race ends. He starts asking me a lot of questions. I don't think I can use my age as an excuse. I was straight up dumb by telling him where I actually worked. I worked at the library close by. I don't remember any other details about what he asked or said because I was so freaked out that I had actually told a strange, middle aged man who convinced me to follow him to a secluded area where I work. At this point, I thought of some reason I needed to get out of there and biked away. A lot of those details are hazy to me, but I distinctly remember the next few weeks of work at library, filled with fear that he was going to find me. Important lesson. Never forget that your safety is always more important than someone else's temporarily hurt feelings. Sometimes you have to say no for your personal safety in GTFO. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.